Welcome aboard, I'm Jacqueline St. James and today I'm going to give you nine new rules for all passengers to know on the next Elegance and Sophistication. Welcome back. One of nine air travel pet peeves that I have is flyers storing their luggage at the front of the plane when their seat assignment is way in the back. I have been flying a lot lately so I thought I'd vent just a little. <laughs> so bear with me. After witnessing all manners of bad behavior in the air in recent months, I have compiled some new guidelines for how I'd like my fellow passengers to act on my next flight. New rule number one, A, you in the aisle seat, <laughs> don't give me that look when I indicate that I need to get up from my window seat to use the laboratory. Yeah, you, you know, important, important business guy who drank two little bottles of cheap red wine on the 45 minute New York to Boston flight last week. <laughs> yes, you. I'm not doing this just for the fun of it. I don't expect you to smile, but please, no dramatic sigh or eye roll. Believe me, it's just not necessary. Rule number two, if you're going to sit next to each other for six hours or longer, it is not okay to pretend that I don't exist. I'm not even asking for a hello or a nod of the head when I plunk down my magazine or the seat next to you, but, ple but pretending that I'm a flying ghost is just silly. I mean, I promise I won't talk your ear off or I even won't even talk at you at all. Just acknowledge my existence with some eye contact and get up without a fuss if I'm in the window seat, because if you keep it up in the event of an emergency, I will be that ghost who will not be able to help you. Rule number three, that armrest that's separating us, it's not yours, it's not mine. Honey, it's shared territory. Unless you're willing to pay me to monopolize it, let's be civil about it, shall we? Rule number four, the back of my seat, oh my god, I hate this. The back of my seat is not your personal playground. I can feel your knees bumping into my back. I can feel it when you're fishing around the seat pocket, looking for your iPad, and it's damn annoying. Rule number five, flight time is not nail polish time. Oh my god, that stuff stinks. I don't even like doing it myself, it makes me nauseous. If you didn't have time to do it in the hotel room before heading out to the airport, it can certainly wait until you're home on the ground. Yes, I recently had this woman who had three, three different nail polish colors for each nail. I mean, come on! This isn't Annabelle's Nail Salon, people. Rule number six. If you're sitting in seat 34B and I'm in 12A, you don't get to put your carry-on in my overhead bin space on your way to the back. If you do, uh, and they're only doing this, and let me tell you, they're only doing this so they don't have to go through that whole entire rigmarole of trying to get your luggage with a thousand people walking in front of you and hitting people's elbows and all that. Let me tell you, you do not get to put your suitcase in my overhead compartment in 12A if you're sitting way in the back at 36B. Okay, you, you just don't, you just don't get to do it. Okay, because if you do. I have the authority to go through it and find your personal sex toys or whatever else you've got stashed in there. Just saying. <laughs> Rule number seven, yeah. We all know that if you don't shut down your mobile phone during taxi and takeoff, you probably won't crash the plane, but not doing so makes you look like a privileged, self-important, and entitled bozo. So shut it off. Lord, I swear I watched the flight attendant four times, four times, go up and down the aisle telling people to turn off the cell phones. I mean, you're not going to die for a few minutes of loneliness. Okay, rule number eight. If there was an emergency landing and evacuation, you wouldn't have the slightest idea what to do. Because the last time you listened to the safety demo or read the instructions, you were six years old on your first flight and you had dreams of being a pilot one day. 
That's why when Captain Sullenberger landed his U.S. Airways Airbus on the Hudson River, most people left the plane without their life vests. So even if you don't want to listen this time, stop yammering to your pal across the aisle and at least let me pay attention to it. And rule number nine, if you bring a small child on board, God, I swear they should have their own, they should be down in, in luggage, down in the bottom. I can't stand kids. If you bring a small child on board, you do not, and I repeat, do not get to pop a Xanax, fall asleep, and leave the little tyke to his own devices. And no, the flight attendants are not babysitters. Next time, if you need to conk out, you hire a nanny girl, okay? Hire a nanny and bring her along. So there you have it. Those are my nine new roles of air travel for my fellow passengers to some of you. This is going to be a reminder. So remember to enjoy your flight and quit annoying your fellow passengers. <laughs> Thanks for watching Elegant Sophistication and I'll see you next week with some more helpful tips. Bye for now. Yeah.